Hey everybody, as you know, uh, about 11 months ago, last February, we got word at Deeper Life that one of our church members, Alicia Gray, had been arrested and charged with um, a sexual relationship with one of her students. She's a high school teacher here in Mobile. And we decided then and there that the degree of her guilt and innocence would not be a deciding factor on how, how we loved her and how much we loved her. And so we decided to rally around them and we knew that was the right thing to do. And so over the last 11 months, it's been an amazing thing to watch as Alicia has had her identity redefined in the context of, of the fact that she's a daughter of God and she's fully loved no matter what she does. In talking with Alicia's lawyer, uh, Chris and Alicia decided a few months ago to a plea deal. And so they agreed to plead out uh, for time for her and so this morning uh, a sentence was handed down and a number of us were able to be there at the courtroom for her sentencing and in that moment Alicia got to make a statement to the judge before he sentenced her that honestly I have to tell you was one of the most powerful things I've ever heard in my life Alicia's statement preached the gospel it showed the power of grace and how grace has saved her and how the love of the Father has saved her life. In that statement, she apologized to the young man involved in that relationship and his family, and she talked about what she wants to see the Lord do there. So after the sentencing, uh, I was able to sit down with Alicia and get an interview with her on video. We had talked about this beforehand, and she wanted to do this. We want you to hear Alicia's heart. We want you to hear what God has done in her life in this last 11 months. Here's Alicia Gray. I actually just explained that to some of my in-laws on the way here. Um, that is something I, of course, am very sorry for my selfish actions and, and the choices that I made out of insecurity and hurts that I felt myself. Um, and I'm sorry for those and so thankful that God has changed me and shown me my identity in Jesus Christ to where I won't make those same selfish decisions and hurt other people. Um, so because that joy that he's given me and that changed identity, I no longer have to feel shame about the person I once was that I will never be again because I know who I am in Jesus. It's one of those things of peace and rest, which are words we throw around a lot, but God really gives us overwhelming peace when you know who you are and you know that you don't have to do something to make God happy at you. You don't have to perform for other people. and. Um, because I have. I've had a lot of advice throughout this. That people need to see me cry more. They need to see me fall apart. And my body sometimes makes me think, well, shouldn't I be a mess right now? Shouldn't I have to do this? But um, God just lets that peace fall and gives me that security of knowing I'm just not that person anymore. And I don't have to live the way I used to live because it was different. Because I did. I had insecurities. I... Um, I had pain in my own heart and a void that I thought I needed to feel through attention and all kinds of other things and that void was just needing Jesus and having absolutely no lack. He completely fills everything and makes me secure in who I am, happy in who I am and makes it where he's the only person I want to please and the great thing is I don't have to do anything to please him because when God sees me he just sees Jesus and Jesus absolute finished work on the cross and he is very happy at me. The statement I made in court today, and I'd like to say to everyone who didn't hear it in fullness, is that I just want to say this in regards to the victim and the family and to anyone who's been hurt through this. I want to apologize for my inappropriate and selfish and very hurtful actions. Selfish really is the word. I acted out on my own insecurities without thought or concern for anyone else's well-being. I realize I've hurt many people, and I also realize the implications of what I've done and the possible difficulties it can cause for people who've been hurt, you know, bitterness, anger, fear, anxiety, depression, insecurity, and so on. I mean, and all those things were things that led up to my behavior, so I don't wish that on anyone else. Um, complete healing is needed for you to be able to walk in um, the grace that God gives. And I apologize for what I've done. The person I was a year ago is gone and changed forever thanks to the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ and God our Father and the renewed mind that he's given me. Everyone who's been hurt is constantly in my prayers. I pray that my unwarranted actions and the hurt it has caused will not have a hold on anyone's lives. I pray for peace, healing, and restoration. 
And my ultimate prayer is, your kingdom come, your will be done, God. Take this situation that should have never, ever happened and provide healing and rest to anyone who has been hurt. Um, Jesus has brought me to a place of peace in which I'm ready for the consequences that should befall me. He's shown me the continued difficulty that people would experience should this case go to trial. So I had no desire to drag anyone through that or require people who have been hurt to have to testify publicly or hear the testimonies. Thankfully, God presented another option in which I can confess my actions alone without requiring others to have to endure that. I confess my sin and ask forgiveness from each person involved, anyone who's been hurt or touched by this, whether small or big, it's all the same. Hurt is hurt. I don't expect that the forgiveness might happen. I understand the implications of pain and bitterness that I've caused. You're completely justified to feel that way, but I do pray that each of you be free of the pain and bitterness, anger, anxiety, whatever you feel. Those are not things that are from God. God doesn't want that for you. He didn't want this situation to happen, but thank God he uses the hurts of others. He redeemed me and he's placed it in my heart to just glorify him. And I pray that he uses this situation to heal all those involved. God's in the business of loving people and restoring lives. Nothing compares to his great love. Though there are several people who have been victim to this situation, all those who have been hurt. It should have never happened to you, but God still makes beauty from ashes. He can restore your lives that have been broken because I chose to act out of selfishness and hurt people. I continue to pray that the healer of all healers can give you freedom from the pain you've experienced. I will ask my friends, family, and church congregation to keep you in prayer for complete healing, peace, and restoration. Grace and peace be with you.